Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to understand the next important concept in statistics and that is Central Limit Theorem. We are going to understand this concept with the help of simulation so that we can understand this concept very easily and effectively. So let's begin. When we are going to learn this concept, this concept is consisting of multiple parts. That means first we are going to understand what is Central Limit Theorem. It is also called as CLT as a short form. Then we are going to understand what is the application of this CLT and what is the formula that we are using during the calculation of Central Limit Theorem. And we will also see the simulations for Central Limit Theorem which is for normal distribution, uniform distribution, skewed distribution as well as any other custom distributions. So let's start with what is Central Limit Theorem. This Central Limit Theorem states that the sampling distribution of the mean is approximately normal if the sample size is sufficiently large and this is applicable to all kinds of distribution. That means this sampling distribution can be drawn from the normal distribution, uniform distribution, skewed distribution, exponential distribution or any other statistical distribution. That means it is applicable to all kinds of distribution from which we are drawing the data. The second point for the center limit theorem is the approximation improves as the sample size gets larger. That means for the larger sample size, the distribution is becoming or behaving as a normal distribution. Now let's understand what is that sample size is required. This required sample size we can divide or we can see into two parts. One, we can say what is the sample size required for the normal distribution and two, we can say what is the sample size that is required for the all other distributions. For the normal distribution, as we are already drawing the data from the normal distribution or normal distribution population, then small sample size which is less than 30 of the mean also shows the normal distribution. But from the distribution we are drawing the data points, if it is not following the normal distribution, then we require 30 or more data points of mean to represent normal distribution. This is the introduction of the center limit theorem. Now in second part, let's understand what is the application of the center limit theorem and what is the formula that we are going to use to convert any other distribution to the normal distribution. Application of the center limit theorem, it is having the multiple applications. It is being widely used in probability distributions and all sampling techniques. This is a basis for calculating confidence intervals and various hypothesis tests. And the third important application of it, X bar R chart depends on the center limit theorem since each point plotted on the X bar chart represent the sample mean. So here we are going to use the center limit theorem. Up to this point of time, you have understood what is the center limit theorem and why it is practically important. Now let's understand how any kind of distribution is behaving as a normal distribution if you are drawing the averages of that means. So let's understand these relationships with the help of simulations. Let's see first the simulation for normal distribution and then we will continue with the uniform distribution, skewed distribution as well as for the custom distributions. For reference, I have taken this simulation from the online statbook.com and I am also sharing the link of this into the description section. Let's understand this simulation for the normal distribution first. What is the meaning of that? That means whatever the data points that we are drawing from the population, that population is already following some normal distribution. Let's see this distribution or the center limit theorem for the mean and we can also see fit normal curve along with it. We can also select for the standard deviation and let's also see what is the fit normal curve along with it. Now what we are doing, we are collecting the data in this set of 5 averages. So when I am clicking on this 5, so I have drawn the data that is of set of 5 averages. Let's continue that. Here in this simulation we can say that as the number of observations are more than 30, this distribution already starting behaving as a normal distribution and this is applicable to both mean as well as standard deviation. As we are going to increase the sample size, we can say that this approximation is becoming more stronger and stronger. So this is demonstrating center limit theorem. That means averages of the sufficiently large sample sizes shows the normal distributions even if 
the data from which we are drawing that observations may not follow the normal distribution. Let's select an another distribution which is uniform distribution. Again, we continue the same exercise. That means we are drawing the data from this observation. We are making the averages of it and we are drawing that averages. Let's collect these averages into the group of five. So as we are going to conduct this exercise, here also we can say that as the sample size is more than 30, this distribution already started behaving as a normal distribution. So the center limit theorem is also applicable for the uniform distribution. As we goes on increasing the sample size, we can say that this approximation is becoming more stronger and stronger. Now let's see this same simulation for the skewed distribution. This is the right skewed distribution and we can also use the center limit theorem for the left skewed distribution as well. Let's continue the same exercise. That means we are drawing the observations from this distribution. We are making the averages of it and we are drawing that observation to understand whether it is following the normal distribution or not. So as we are going to collect the data here, we can see as the sample size is more than 30, this distribution is already started behaving as a normal distribution. So the center limit theorem is also validated for the skewed distribution. We can also take any other custom distribution and we can say how the data is behaving for these custom distributions. Okay, so let's draw any of the custom distribution and uh, then we can use this data to validate center limit theorem. This is some of the custom distribution that we had taken. Okay, let's continue the same exercise. That means we are drawing the sum of the data points from this distribution and we are making the averages of it. We are drawing that averages to see whether it is following the normal distribution or not. Let's collect the data in the set of five and make averages of it. Here we can say that for the sample size more than 30, we can say that it has already started behaving as a normal distribution again. So the center limit theorem is again validated for any kind of other custom distributions. This simulation is very helpful to understand how the center limit theorem works. If you also want to validate it, you can use this link, you can visit this link and you can also validate it by your own. Now let's understand what is the formula that we are using in center limit theorem. Before to go to the formula, let's recap what we had seen so far. What is the center limit theorem? The mean of large random samples are approximately normal. The center limit theorem is a fundamental theorem of probability and statistics. According to center limit theorem, averages of sufficiently large sample sizes tend to be normally distributed even if individual values are not normally distributed and that we are also validated with multiple simulations. If sigma is the standard deviation of individual data points in the population, the variance of the averages is sigma square upon n, where n is the sample size. Thus, the standard deviation of the averages is sigma upon root n. And we can formulate the equation sigma x bar, which is equal to sigma upon root of n. Here, in this equation, sigma is the population standard deviation. Sigma x bar is the sample standard deviation. We are also calling it as a standard error of mean. And n is the sample size. This is the formula that we are using in center limit theorem. We had also seen this simulation and the link is already provided into the description section. What we had seen for the uniform population, a population that follows a uniform distribution is symmetric that we can see from this diagram, but strongly non-normal as the first histogram demonstrates. Here we can see that into the diagram. However, the distribution of the sample means from 1000 sample sizes of five from this population is approximately normal because of center limit theorem and we had already validated that. This histogram of sample means also includes superimposed normal curve to illustrate its normality. We had also seen the center limit theorem for the exponential distribution. A population that follows an exponential distribution is asymmetric and non-normal that we can see from this first histogram. However, if you draw the distribution of sample means from 1000 sample sizes of size 5 from this population, we can say it is approximately normal as demonstrated by the second histogram. This histogram of sample means also includes a superimposed normal curve 
to illustrate its normality. This is the last but one of the most important slide that I am going to share with you. Here we can see the first distribution is a normal distribution, second distribution is exponential distribution and third one is a uniform distribution. For n is equal to 2 that means if you plot two averages of the data points we can see how the distribution is behaving for the normal distribution, exponential distribution as well as for the uniform distribution. If we draw this distribution for the 10 averages then we can say that this distribution is behaving somewhat to normal distribution. But if you are going to increase the sample size of that averages to 30 then we can say that irrespective of the data points from which we are drawing these data points all the distributions are behaving like a normal distribution and that's why we are always talking about 30 data points 30 data points and 30 data points so the basis behind the 30 data points is the central limit theorem i'm sure you have might got complete clarity about the central limit theorem and why we are always talking about the 30 data points if you have found this information useful then please don't forget to like this video add your valuable comments and don't forget to subscribe this channel to get such valuable informations at the end of this video if you want to learn the lean six sigma in most effective way then please visit the link vijaysabe.co slash join thank you for watching and see you in the next video